Hey everybody and uh, welcome back to Foil Labs. Um, not quite summer here, it's freezing cold. We've got a southerly blowing straight into the workshop and uh, I've got my, my woolen, woolen jerseys on underneath here because it's pretty cold. And the wind is really humming through, uh, so it's not quite a foiling day. Anyway, I just wanted to carry on now from where we were um, in terms of um, looking at and finishing off our foils. So a couple of notes that I'll refer to um, before I take you over to the bench and I'll show you what we've done so far with bringing um, our foil surface up to the real beautiful surface that we're looking for. Um, so if we come a little bit closer here, um, we've gone through a lot of discussions talking about um, turbulent flow and, and we've also talked about um, foils that sing and, and, and have a harmonic and we were talking also about you know there's no real proof as to whether a singing foil or a foil that really hums is any slower than um, one that doesn't and there are there are examples of the same foil singing in one day when it went out and not singing the next so it's an interesting subject that i had a discussion with my friend mike drummond about and we talked about um the sharpening of edges and the truing up of edges as well. So today we want to talk about in particular the boundary layer and the boundary layer is super important where we're looking at uh, turbulent flow and eddies um, and the, 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 the causes of an unfair service, surface with eddies that creates pressure differences across what we call the boundary layer of the foil itself. So we have our um, low pressure surface and our high pressure surface underneath and the boundary layer, the layer that the, 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 the water is um, sticking to and, and traveling around the surface of the foil creating uh, the lift that we require. And remember too that lift is determined by the angle of attack. So um, if I flick over, I've just done another quick sketch so we have our low pressure um, uh, surface on the top and our high pressure underneath and just some a little bit of a, a sketch of how the water is deflected across these surfaces and in particular talking about the upper boundary surface and the lower boundary surface. Now it's true to say that the underside of our foils is the most important and this is the surface that you want as true as possible and as clean and as smooth as possible 100% of the distance from the entry point at the um, leading edge to the exit point at the, at the trailing edge. Um, and I did a little bit of a sketch in terms of what, what uh, we call um, the angle of attack to determine lift and here's just uh, zero degrees and a foil that's directed down uh, negative and one that's positive lift. So we've got to remember that our foils are designed and fastened to our fuselage in such a way to give that positive and negative effect and also the elevator has a, a huge effect on this as well which we'll ha have a look at later. So I'll take you over to the bench and today we're going to look at the boundary layers and how we um, take care of eddies and pitting and to create a even pressure difference and therefore distribution of forces that are even across the foil surfaces. So let's come across and here's a foil that in previous uh, videos I've shown you that I've worked very very hard on and as I said you know we can have eight hours on this blade and eight hours on this blade top and bottom there's a lot of time that's gone on to this. So this has been now <coughs> sprayed with a urethane finish and this is the product I use. It's a high performance clear uh, two pack epoxy urethane and so this has now gone hard. I sprayed this in the conventional way using a compressor and a, a, a little um, touch up gun and it looks beautiful. I'm really pleased with how it looks. The, the, the flow coat has it's flowed out nicely. It's given me a nice surface now from which to go to the next level in terms of uh, using a finer wet and dry sandpaper to finish this off. So now if I, this looks great and it looks fair, it looks true, I'm really happy with it. So if I flip it over now, 
I've already started working on this surface here. So this is, um, I'm using a 400 grit and I'm using two different blocks. These are quite small blocks and in a sense these have turned into my favourite ones. Um, it's a quite a small little cedar block and I can wrap a nice little piece of um, wet and dry around it, keeping it nice and tight, nice and strapped in tight and adhered to the surface. Dipping it in some water and then gradually just working on the Duropox surface and all I'm doing, I'm not doing any more fairing. I've done all the fairing and all of the um, shaping and removing of lumps and bumps. This is now just dealing with the surface itself. So I'm keeping keeping it moving, working it in the diagonals, bringing it up to the trailing edge and then I've got my rag and I wipe it clean dry it off, use the heat from my hand as I'm rubbing this across using the heat from my hand to now bring up that nice surface. Now this is really smooth but now it's starting to show up the little pitting, the little tiny holes that now we need to deal with in particular at the tip here. Um, quite a bit of, of pitting that's happening and a little bit of work around on the on the leading edge. So to deal with this now, um, I would do the same on this side with my 400 grit, identify all the pitting and all of the, these little spots. And <clears throat> just over on the side here, I've mixed up some resin, epoxy resin, um, with a little bit of epoxy, black epoxy pigment, just to give it a, uh, make it black. And I have my kebab stick and I've mixed it so that it sort of hangs and it drops. So I've thickened it up with some high density filler. And what I'll do, notice, see how this just nicely hangs off the tip. So now I'm going to come to these tiny, tiny little pitting holes and I'm going to just drop a little bit of resin in each it's it is a little bit meticulous now the other people have other methods um, where they might put a a special coat a filler coat over their foil um, i quite like to just put minim, minimal i don't I like to cover the whole thing again in the sense there's just a few that i need to take care of so I feel that this is a nice way of just dealing with it. Just very carefully creating these little nodules which it will be easy to um, wet and dry off later. And on the tip here again, um, we've got one here and tiny little pitting holes. Another coat of Duropox would not fill these they're slightly too deep. So I'm filling these with a little bit of a pigmented epoxy resin and then I will wet and dry these off with 400 grit sandpaper and then um, take this outside and uh, um, a, a Durapox again and work it up to probably um, a 600 grit and then an 800 grit and I may even go to an even um, finer wet and dry this one is um, this one's a thousand so I think we'll cover that in, in the next video so for this video it's more about now identifying the small tiny pitting holes the final little blemishes that need to be taken care of to make sure that this is absolutely perfect particularly the undersurface of this boundary layer the boundary layer being the obviously the undersurface and also on the top surface as well. So there's a lot of time that is spent in perfecting and throwing up these foils. Um, but the advantages, um, every little bit counts. So it's worth it in the end. Thanks for watching.